Hello everyone, it's me, Dr. Ryan, coming to you again from my office with another Step 1 Question Review. Today we've got a tricky question sent to me by one of my Twitter followers, so let's just get right to it. So the question says, a 70-year-old man presents to the emergency department with a blood pressure of 220 over 140. He has administered an intravenous medication with the following effects. Heart rate decrease, stroke volume no change, systemic vascular resistance decrease. The question asks, which of the following drugs was most likely given? Fentolamine, labetalol, hydralazine, nitroprusside, or metoprolol? Okay, so what we've got here is a pretty classic pharmacology question. You're given the effects of a drug on physiology parameters and asked what the drug might be. You're definitely going to see questions like this on your step exam. So let's start by reminding ourselves of how the five drugs that are answer choices work. So fentolamine is an alpha blocker. It's going to decrease systemic vascular resistance. Labetalol is a combination alpha and beta receptor blocker. Hydralazine and nitroprusside work through mechanisms outside of the alpha-beta system. They're direct vasodilators, which lower systemic vascular resistance. And then finally, metoprolol is a cardioselective beta-1 blocker. So if we look at the question, we see that whatever drug was given decreased heart rate. Well, the only drugs on our list that decrease heart rate are the beta blockers. So right away, we know the answer can't be fentolamine, hydralazine, or nitroprusside. Fentolamine, by blocking alpha receptors, lowers the systemic vascular resistance, but this triggers the sympathetic nervous system, and you get a compensatory increase in heart rate through the sympathetic nervous system. So heart rate goes up when you give a drug like fentolamine. The same thing is true of hydralazine and nitroprusside. These are vasodilators. They vasodilate arterioles in the periphery that lowers systemic vascular resistance, but it leads to a compensatory increase in heart rate. So now we're down to two answer choices, labetalol and metoprolol, and let's start by looking at metoprolol. So metoprolol is a beta-1 selective blocker. That's going to decrease heart rate, so that means it could be the answer to our question. But beta-1 receptors are also found on myocytes, and metoprolol blocks those beta receptors and decreases contractility of the left ventricle. That's going to lead to a fall in stroke volume, and the question shows that there's no change in stroke volume with the drug. So this drug can't be metoprolol because metoprolol would lower the stroke volume. So now we're left with labetalol, which is the answer to this question. And it turns out that labetalol has no effect on stroke volume. And this is a confusing thing. It's not widely taught. Most medical students probably don't know this. So it turns out that labetalol has a number of effects on stroke volume that tend to cancel each other out such that overall there's no net change in stroke volume. So first of all, labetalol blocks alpha-1 receptors found in arterioles. When you block these receptors, you get vasodilation, and that reduces the systemic vascular resistance. This reduces the afterload on the left ventricle and tends to increase the stroke volume. However, labetalol also blocks alpha receptors found in veins, and when you do this, the veins dilate and they fill with blood. This pools blood in the venous system and takes it away from the left ventricle, and that reduces the preload on the left ventricle. And so when you reduce the preload on the left ventricle, that decreases the stroke volume. And so it turns out that these two effects cancel each other out such that you get no net change in stroke volume. You still get a reduction in blood pressure because of the peripheral vasodilation. You still get a fall in heart rate because of the beta blockade, but the stroke volume effects cancel each other out. And so in clinical studies of labetalol, it's been shown that there's very little effect of this drug on stroke volume and cardiac output. So going back to our question, labetalol is the answer, but this is going to drive a lot of you nuts because almost certainly you were never taught that labetalol, despite being a beta blocker, has no effect on stroke volume. And here's what I'm going to tell you about this. You shouldn't bother worrying about this fact. This is such a tiny piece of minutia about the drug labetalol, it is not worth learning. And as I'll show you in just a second, it's not in first aid. And information that is not in first aid, I don't think is worth wasting your time on learning. So here's the first aid page on beta blockers, and it mentions that labetalol is a non-selective alpha and beta antagonist, just like we talked about. But there's no mention of this peculiar effect of labetalol that it doesn't change stroke volume. So I don't think it's worth memorizing that. And this is a problem that I see a lot of students have. They come across a really tricky question. It brings up some tiny piece of minutia about a drug or disease that's not in first aid, and they spend a lot of time trying to commit that to memory. I don't think that's worth your time especially now that step one is pass-fail, you should focus on the big picture.
You should know that labetalol blocks alpha and beta receptors, and you should know what the physiologic consequences are of blocking alpha and beta receptors. But I don't think you need to worry a lot about the fact that labetalol doesn't change stroke volume. So what are the takeaways from this question? Well, first of all, I don't think you should worry about minutia that's not in first aid for the boards. There's plenty to learn in that book. I don't think you need to stress about things outside that book, especially given that step one is pass fail now. But the second takeaway is that you should know how antihypertensive drugs work, whether they act on alpha or beta receptors and what that means. And you should know the big picture of how these drugs affect heart rate, stroke volume, and systemic vascular resistance. And that concludes today's step one question review.